That's huge. And that's a that's canine. Heavy too. Heavy and huge. Well, there's a lot of places in the Little Belt Mountains to explore. It's in National Forest, Lewis and Clark National Forest. And currently Linda and I are on the north end of, of the Lewis and Clark National Forest. Just poking around. Ugh, snow, no. <laughs> well, these days when you get to a campsite, the first thing you gotta do is clean it up because there's so many people that just leave their trash behind. Nobody's coming to get it except you and me, Linda, of course, she's at, busy at it right now. So anyways, that's the first thing we gotta do. I guess some stuff I can just pick up. Air filter. Piece of glass. Not exactly a, a welcome fire pit. It's a fire pit. I know. Make it look nice for the people that are coming in after and you. And it is still trash. <laughs> so take your trash out. Exactly. Okay, even their target thing. Ding dongs. This tool, by the way, was only like nine or 10 bucks on Amazon delivered. Something we should all have with us. Whole pile of shell casings here. I'm so upset at the fairy godmother for not coming along and picking up all this garbage. Oh, tent stake ready for somebody's tire. But I'll tell you what the Forest Service, what I think they're trying to do is they're trying to shut down all dispersed camping like this. If we keep trashing the place, then these access roads, you're going to come back next year, there's going to be boulders across all of these and you won't be able to get in here. Uh, I've heard in the past that they want us in campgrounds only, no dispersed camping. So if we're not careful, we're going to lose this. Um, it just depends on what administration is in Washington, D.C., and I won't go into that, but uh, it's just, we could lose it in a heartbeat, so got to be careful. All you got to do is just pick up after yourself. Now, this one's been laying there for a while, but I swear, you come back 100 years from now, these things will still be here. Wow, what a nice day. It's been cold. There's a lot of snow around here. And we're down pretty low. We purposely didn't, there's nicer campgrounds or campsites up, up the mountain further, but uh, real deep snow up there still. And this is the first warm days uh, that we've had. What is this? This is about the 29th of April, 28th, 29th of April. So this is the first time that Linda and I have gotten out when it's warm. And we're going to be here for a few days. There's some things around here I want to show you. Oh, look at this. Dead tree, nice dry firewood. Somebody tried to cut it down. Yeah, maybe not such a good idea. Having any luck down here? Finding what you're looking for? <laughs> Well, I found some huge canine tracks up here and I want to show them to Linda if I can find them again. 
There it is. There's one. Check this out. That's huge. And that's a that's canine. Heavy too. Heavy and huge. Canine track. Maybe a wolf. <laughs> We're in wolf territory, so I wouldn't doubt it. Well, yeah, you decide. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it took a bit of wind to snap off that big old tree. We're currently up at Kings Hill. That's the summit of the mountains here, just above where we're camped. This is an area called Showdown. It's still winter time up here. Although it's a warm day, it must be 60 degrees anyway. But this is the ski resort. Kind of a nice place and really popular. Nice folks run this place too. I never got into skiing. When I was in junior high and high school, my family didn't have any money. And you know, we, we got by. But uh, the thing was that my friends all got new ski equipment every year. New ski jacket, new skis, new poles, new boots. And I knew my folks couldn't afford that. So there was no way I would ask them. But I kinda, you know, it's kinda too bad I never got into skiing because it's a big thing in Montana. And Linda, why didn't you get into skiing? What? <laughs> skiing? What's that? <laughs> well, one thing that's new for Linda and I on this trip is that we've installed security cameras on our home. They're made by Reolink. Reolink started contacting me uh, several months ago and offering me these cameras for our trailer, but they wouldn't work for us, for us personally, because we seldom camp where we have cell service. And that uh, that meant that they wouldn't do us much good trying to keep an eye on our trailer. But they did mention to us, they says, what about your home? And that, that rang a bell with me because we do worry about our home when we're away. And a lot of you RVers and people on the road, you have a home and, and you're also probably in cell service a lot more than Linda and I are. Some of you probably hardly get out of cell service. So you would be able to see what's going on at your house immediately. Also, these cameras are made for your RV. So if you happen to be camped and you're away from your RV, you can keep an eye on what's going on at your camp. Now, if, if somebody should, like on our house, if somebody walks up the steps or something, I would get an instant notification that, that somebody was there. Now, Reolink sent me two different cameras. They sent me the Argus Eco, and they sent me the Argus PT. And the Argus Eco is a steady mount. It, it has a uh, 1080p video, uh, and it's HD, 15 frame per, frames per second. Good, clear video is what I'm getting from it, from both of these cameras. Very, very clear. But if somebody walks up, I get an instant notification on my phone. Now, each of these cameras also has a built-in microphone and speaker, so you can talk to this person or whoever it is that comes up to your door, which means that you can use these even if you're home and somebody comes up to your, to your front door and you're in your living room, you can, see, you can see and you can say, yeah, what do you want? You know, and, they, and they'll hear you and they'll be able to talk back and you'll know. And also, they are either rechargeable or you can plug them into a, you can get a solar panel from Reolink that's got plenty of wire on it. You can wire it pretty far away, like 20, 25 feet away from wherever the camera's at. And that's how I've got mine set up so I never have to worry about them going dead. But if you don't wanna do that, if they're just on your RV or something, you can also just recharge them and set them up. Each one has a slot for an SD card so you can put in a lot of memory if you want to. So these are pretty cool. I was impressed with the quality of these units. These things are well made. They're in cast aluminum housings, and they're, um, you can tell just by hand, they're heavy, you can tell they're very high quality. Now the Argus PT also swivels. So you can, you can remotely, you can make it look around like this, you know, and, 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 focus, in, and uh, focus on different areas if you want. So pretty pleased here. I'm happy with the quality of the product and I'm happy with uh, a little more peace of mind for Linda and I while we're away. Check them out, I'll put a link down below. Linda and I were just getting ready to do a little metal detecting around camp area here. 
George, who's one of our viewers, sent us this metal detector. He must be a real nice guy because he bought his wife a brand new metal detector. And, and then he and his wife thought it would be nice to send us the old one. And let me tell you, their old one is leaps and bounds better than our original. <laughs> this is an old tracker, a Bounty Hunter Tracker 4, and they sent us a Bounty Hunter Discovery 3300 with way more capabilities. It just discerns what's in the ground a lot better than, than, our, than our original one. Thank you, George, and, and, and I don't remember your wife's name, but thank you to both of you. Usually what you find around campgrounds is Oh, one of about three or four different things. Brass cartridge cases, uh, pull tabs, melted aluminum, spent bullets, <laughs> things like that. Melted aluminum. That's from everybody throwing their beer cans into the into the fire. Linda's just learning what the different tones are are like here. I don't know what they are. That's a grunt, and on this one so far it's just been iron. Screws, nails, things like that. Yep. Let's see what this old one does. See, it gives a higher pitch tone. Mm. So I would have probably dug that, but hers discriminated it out pretty good. What's that high pitch? Got two tones there. You got a grunt and you got a squeak. Infamous 22 casing. I try metal detecting around fire rings, but I've kind of given up. Uh, except for a few pennies, what I always find is pull tabs and the melted aluminum thing. So I don't, I don't do too much of that anymore. Try to stay clear of metal detecting in camps because of all this. Built up over the years. Well, we came across this. Somebody's already dug it up. It's, uh, it's an old trash pile. And, um, but even though there's a lot more stuff down here, you can see why they didn't go any further because there's, there's modern stuff in here, like, like this aerosol can. So it's not, a re it's not really old stuff. Even though um, we probed around a little bit, there's a lot of stuff underneath this, but it's all um, modern. Now, due to the gold rush from those days, almost all rivers and streams in Montana, especially these mountain streams, have been dredged. So the area going up through here and all down the other, down the other side, everything, it's all been dredged and the soil's all been turned over. So you're not going to find much gold, but you might find something. One thing you will not find is any artifacts. So even though we're on a private right-of-way here, when the telephone line's going through, there's no artifacts to be found because all the soil's been turned over. Okay, I found a space alien head. Now, what is it, Rick? Looks like the Venturi off a carburetor, and those are the pickup. These are the pickup tubes right here. Somebody broke down out here, was trying to get it back on the road. Yep. And uh, we mean out here, too. <laughs> well, Linda's starting to get used to the tones on this machine and uh, starting to discriminate all the trash out. <laughs> Is that snow through the trees or is that something? 
It looks like snow through the trees to me. Want to head back? Yeah. Okay. Well, I have a forest mystery for you. It's very strange, and I'm seeking some answers. <laughs> Let's see if you guys can come up with some ideas on this. Poking around in the woods here, I've been finding holes in the ground. It's hard, I know it's hard for you to tell. This one's about four feet in diameter, straight-sided, but there's no pile of dirt on the outside. It's just a hole in the ground. Now, of course, when somebody digs a hole in the ground, there's a hole in the ground and there's a pile of dirt right next to it. Like when a miner, uh, like a lot of mining in this area and there's a lot of exploratory holes around here and there'll be a hole in the ground and a pile of dirt. This hole has no pile of dirt. Let's look around some more. Here's another one. This one again is about eh, four feet square, two or three feet deep, about three feet deep. It almost looks square. I don't know if that was just happened that way or if it's a natural hole. But once again, I'll put my foot in front of it. You can kind of get a more of an idea of size here. No pile of dirt. This next hole is the hole that made me notice the other holes. <laughs> this one's even more unusual. Remember I showed you those, this rubbish dump here with the cans? This is the one that made me notice it first. This is a freshly dug hole. No dirt, no dirt around the edges at all. If you're thinking sinkholes, these holes appear to be purposely dug, hand dug, so I don't think so. Little play on words there. I have a couple of theories, <laughs> but uh, that's all they are. Tell you what, put your ideas in the comments down below this video. And in the video next Friday, I'll tell you what I think. Let me tell you about Cowboy coffee. I saw it on gone again. Rick and Linda showed us how to make it. I've had it every day since. Let me tell you about cowboy coffee. I learned to make it on gone again. Rick and Linda showed us how to make it So simple, anybody can So simple, anybody can So simple, anybody can Nice morning.